I first met Micah as a teenager in Washington, D.C. on a summer internship, ecstatic to learn that a mere mortal with nothing to recommend her but a student ID could enter the grand Library of Congress reading room, check out any book in their vast collection, and read it in one of the study carols, I eagerly did it. It was hard to focus on reading. There are so many wonders in that glorious room, among them atop eight enormous marble columns are statues of eight women representing religion, commerce, history, art, philosophy, poetry, law, and science. Above each woman is a tablet bearing a quote chosen to reflect the area of endeavor she represents. The quote on religion comes from Micah. His words touched my young heart. It seemed a summary of true religion. My late husband, Timber, and I named our first son after Micah and my father, Tom, and carved on a stone bench above my husband's grave is that scripture from Micah 6, 8. What doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? But there are so many jewels strewn along the path to this famous verse. After the warnings and castigations of chapter 3, the promise of an ultimately peaceful, cooperative, and prosperous future for all the world is much of what Micah offers in chapter 4. As with much prophetic writing, there are layers of meaning and interpretation, some contemporary to the times, some intended to give prophetic insight into the near future, and some into the still far future future. Micah is grouped as one of the twelve minor prophets, with others such as Hosea and Malachi. However, in this case, minor does not mean less significant, only less prolific. Chapter 4 begins with a message also found in Isaiah 2, 2 through 5, as well as in 2 Nephi 12, 2 through 5. In the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. Micah continues, and many nations shall say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. High on a mountain top, a banner is unfurled. Ye nations, now look up, it waves to all the world. In Deseret's sweet, peaceful land, on Zion's mount, Behold it stand. Is it a coincidence that this hymn was the favorite of our son named after Micah? I think not. Micah, like all prophets in the Bible, was a man called to prophesy to his own people. His admonitions to Judah were not messages of comfort and ease. He strongly condemned the spiritual errors and material excesses of his time. But he, like Isaiah, Nephi, and Joseph Smith, understood his message also pertained to people miles and millennia away from his world. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more, but they shall sit, every man, under his vine and his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid." For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Micah 4, 3 through 5 closely parallels Isaiah 2, 2 through 4, and again 2 Nephi 12, 2 through 5. This inclusive prophecy is illuminating and comforting. First, Micah foresees a time when nation shall not lift up sword against nation. What does this mean? Why was it relevant in Micah's time? Why, sadly, is it still relevant in our own time? In Micah 2, verse 2, the Lord excoriates those who would covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away so they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. 
President Dallin Oaks in April 1990 gave a brilliant talk in conference on the subject of world peace. He observes, Each of us should pursue the occupation of peace. But what is peace, and how do we seek it? Many think of peace as the absence of war. Many good people promote peace by opposing war. Those methods may reduce the likelihood or the costs of war, but opposition to war cannot ensure peace because peace is more than the absence of war. The peace the gospel brings is not just the absence of war. It is the opposite of war. Gospel peace is the opposite of any conflict, armed or unarmed. It is the opposite of national or ethnic hostilities, of civil or family strife. In Micah 4.5, respect for the property and heritage of others is enjoined. All people will walk, everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. This is a statement of tolerance, endorsing free agency. There is no insistence that everyone will walk or worship in one way. Rather, it is a statement mirroring the 11th article of faith. We claim the privilege of worshiping Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience and allow all men the same privilege. Let them worship how, where, or what they may. Neither the prophet Joseph Smith nor the prophet Micah felt their God or truth threatened by those who worshiped differently. They both promoted a world of tolerance and peace. But while promising ultimate peace, Micah concludes chapter 4 warning his people, they will be exiled to Babylon and suffer as a woman in travail. He advises his flock to be in pain and labor to bring forth, assuring them their tribulations will neither be forever nor in vain. The Lord has a plan, a plan for peace and well-being about which Micah will drop a huge clue in the next chapter. But as for obtaining peace here and now, President Oaks reminds us how we each can do it. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we follow the formula prescribed by the prophet king, Benjamin. He taught that those who receive a remission of their sins through the atonement of Jesus Christ are filled with the love of God and the knowledge of that which is just and true. That kind of person will not have a mind to injure one another, but to live peaceably with all people. That is our method and salvation, and peace for all humankind is our goal. While we still see horrible wars raging around us in the world, and too many have shunned the idea of pounding their swords into plowshares, we are grateful for the formula for personal peace offered by Micah and our prophets. Do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Thank you.